In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Sisters and brothers, may the Lord give you all the gift of his peace. Well, here we are, day 14. We're almost at the midway point, which we'll reach tomorrow for our 30-day consecration of St. Joseph. And today our topic is Joseph Prompt to Obey. Here's what Pope Francis has to say about the topic. In Egypt, Joseph awaited with patient trust the angel's notice that he could safely return home. In a third dream, the angel told him that those who sought to kill the child were dead and ordered him to rise, take the child and his mother, and return to the land of Israel. Once again, Joseph promptly obeyed. After Herod died, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. It's from the Gospel of Matthew. Here's a reflection. Joseph finally gets established in Egypt with his little family as refugees and immigrants. Then God speaks again. It is time to return to their homeland. Obedience comes from two Latin words, ob and audire, to listen carefully. True obedience is both prompt and uncomplaining because it is God who calls. St. Joseph listens and starts over again uncomplainingly. Application. Consider the influential voices in your life right now. Consider turning down or off the voices that compete with or tune out God's voice for you. Consider how you may incorporate the things you listen to into your prayer life. Ask St. Joseph to pray that you would have the grace to listen carefully and act accordingly. Obedience, something very known in my lifestyle as a diocesan priest, and I do say as a diocesan priest because unlike other religious orders who take three vows, diocesan priests only take two perpetual promises. So rather than poverty, chastity, and obedience, my two promises, perpetual promises, are just uh, chaste celibacy and obedience. And obedience is the more difficult of the two. To listen carefully. Uh, you know, if those of you who know me well, you know, I've moved way more often than I would have wanted. And I didn't initiate, I cooperated with, uh, but I didn't initiate any one of the transfers, except for one in, in 1998. But I guess that put me on the radar for being the guy who's willing to move and take on uh, diff different types of assignments. And I don't regret any of it. You know, in my promise of obedience, I believe that the voice of God speaks to me through my cardinal and through every other bishop or superior that I've ever had. And I've always lived by that. So in addition, in addition to having uh, accepted many different assignments, I also said no to a few, but I'm not gonna tell you what those are. Um, but that's after careful prayer and discernment and good obedience is about listening. Even in my obedience to my cardinal, we were all obedient to God, but in my obedience to my cardinal, I know that the voice of God speaks to me through him, but I'm also called to listen carefully to the voice of God as well, which is why we can dialogue and we can discuss and we can challenge each other when it comes to different things like that. But even though I'm a priest and I, I, I knelt down before the first bishop that ordained me and I promised obedience to him and his successors, it's part of the ordination ritual, you know, I think married folks have an obedience to each other. Children have an obedience to their parents. They don't go crazy. Not the kind of uh, obedience you might be thinking about right now. But if we understand obedience as listening carefully, as the word, as the word defines, then yes, we are obedient to our spouses. The same way I'm obedient to my bishop and children are obedient to their parents. And as well as um, even in our workplace environment, Again, not the hardcore obedience and not the type of obedience that's oppressive and subjugating to people, but when people listen carefully to each other, God's will is done. So perhaps we can think of what God is asking us to listen to very carefully in our lives today, and in that we find our obedience, and in that, I think, we can find the will of God. Let's pray. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you, God entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. 
Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and a guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Friends, looking forward to praying with you again tomorrow and after this video. I hope you like it. I hope you follow it. I invite others to follow it and to share it. God bless.